Hello, good morning. Um, welcome to our next episode of our Owls in Flight virtual flight conversation series, where we discuss matters relating to the COVID-19 pandemic. I am Jana Brady. I'm a geography lecturer at Southern Connecticut State University, and I've teamed up with Southern's Office of International Education to moderate this series. So today I'd like to do a COVID check-in to see the current status of the pandemic in your home country and in your community. Uh, we are now in month five of the pandemic and so much has changed since March. We know more about the virus. We've been through the ups and downs of testing, promising treatments, uh, vaccines, things like that. We've been cooped up in our homes. Then we've been slowly allowed um, out a little bit more. Uh, in some cases, we've had to dial things back a little bit and go inside. Um, but, you know, it's been a lot to take in both in the spring and the summer. So I want to hear how your community is faring, what the government in your uh, your community or your, your country is doing to battle the virus, and uh, just how you guys are coping with it. Eva, can you start us off? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, um, in my community, it's complicated, quite complicated, because the situation has definitely gone worse and cases are ramping up. And we could say that we are even worse than we are. We were when when the confinement and the lockdown and also we can travel and we can do things like normally um, and people normally follow the guidelines um, it's not enough in my opinion it's not enough and um, people uh, or mo moreover people are quite annoyed with the government because they think they think that the government uh, does does not uh, act like if we as if we were in a pandemic and they are like looking um just like paying attention to the economic economic interests and the tourism and that stuff so it could be said that our community is like a divide in two groups the ones who who are in favor of the government and against so that is the problematic and uh, on the other hand my community my area to say it, yeah, it's Aragon. Uh, you may have heard about Zaragoza, which is the, the capital. And we are the, uh, the province or the area which has uh, done um, more, more tests. And that's the reason why we have uh, the highest number of positive cases. And that's a big problem because the other areas who has not done, who have not done as much test as we have done, blame uh, blame the results on us. So there is an, a huge atmosphere of hate and threats, and I don't know the social media. Even the social media are full of of this situation. This a uh, terrible, terrible situation. So it's really sad. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Any, anyone? Eva, there's definitely a similar uh, division here in the United States between people uh, rushing to reopen for economic gain when we should have kept harsher restrictions. Definitely a similar view over here. Especially now, I noticed um, now that schools, is, you know, fall semesters are right around the corner uh, for all grades. And that was a huge debate and topic about, you know, forcing teachers to go back and teach when they didn't feel safe in that environment. But uh, yeah, there's definitely two sides, two views clashing there, saying yeah, we everything needs to return to normal versus um, you know what that what are you doing? Which is just going to make everything worse. But 
But actually, while I just pulled up uh, some charts because I was curious. I haven't looked at what our counts were in Connecticut anyway. But it looks like we're pretty low. I mean, Connecticut has a smaller population, obviously, than some of these states over here that look worse off. But like we're up in the, what, what are we at? Cumulative cases, we're at 50,000 confirmed in Connecticut. Hopefully the source is actually accurate. But then you have California, Florida, they're in the hundreds of thousands. So a big difference. Patricio, the same same issue over there? People arguing? Hello? Yes. Hey, we can hear you. Um, well, here in Chile is we have a very complex situation because as Eva said, there's some people that just want to get out and make their normal life but there are also a lot of people that are still afraid of the presence of presence of the virus and the here in chile well i live in the capital and here in the capital it's it's we have a very complex situation because um, we are divided in communes, and, and some communes are still locked down, but other communes uh, are trying to recover a small normal normality, and the government are try are trying to put down the lockdown in some communes, uh, they have to return the lockdown in another community. There's a dynamic experiment and well, it isn't, getting, it isn't really showing good results because there are still uh, like 100, 100 people dying every day. We have one of the higher infected people numbers in the world so i don't know uh, the things honestly aren't getting aren't not getting better i hope i, I think we are all expect, expecting for the vaccine for i don't know try to feel us a, a little more comfortable but uh, we all know that we we can ex we can say it for sure that the vaccine will really make effect or be really good for everyone it's not complete it's not too tested yet so Patricio yeah. They, it sounds like there isn't a uh, standard or uniform practice by the government there. Is that what's called, like, what's the difference in the communes? Well, uh, here in Chile, we have, um, we have a high percentage of the people who doesn't respect the lockdown from since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, by now, uh, five months later, the people are still not respecting the the lockdown. The people just go out, do their normal life. Infected people don't care if the if they are infected. They they just go out and make all their things. So yes, there is a standard rule for everyone because no one really cares about the virus. A lot of people still think it's kind of a game. Hmm. Well, we definitely uh, there's. I mean, I don't. I don't think so much here in Connecticut as opposed to other states, but definitely similar mindset over here 
Um, I don't know if I would be able to say one, which is the majority, but it seems like people are adhering to the guidelines here, but there's definitely a chunk of the population that, you know, whether they think it's a conspiracy or they just think that it's a pain in the ass and they don't want to follow the rules. Um, but yeah, definitely over here. Eva, what about where you're at? Um, I don't know, people, <clears throat> as I have said, people uh, are divided into groups and there are the, there are the ones who are follow the guidelines like strictly and the ones who just think that, as you said, is a pain in the neck and they are not follow the, they are not going to follow the guidelines. But it depends on on the person and not the person, but the, the group of people like teenagers, and like kids or um, or uh, old people for example old people in my opinion old people are are um, like in, at home almost everyone is uh, is at home but teenagers are like doing whatever they want <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. In here in Connecticut, we have reopened to a degree um, the lockdown has lifted, and there's still guidelines, but it seems I don't know risky almost. To go back to normal already. Um, I guess I shouldn't say normal because there obviously are changes in place, restrictions go out there, but places of business are open again. You know, restaurants are opening and they just need to accommodate by you know, their seating is switched outside or they have to physically space seating apart inside. As I can imagine, it's very difficult to be a uh, restaurant owner right now. But, Patricio, so you guys are still actually under lockdown? There's specifically, specifically, my commune uh, uh, lived the lockdown one or two weeks ago. And we are gradually st- Starting to return into some normality, but mm. yeah, um, I now I can l- go to the street and go for a walk, few streets, but just there. I, st- I, I personally don't still don't. I I'm still not very comfortable with going out just like that. I I was been in, I have been in my home for I think five months by now and I think the the best option I have is to still here. Mm-hmm. If I didn't get it infected yet, why why get infected now? <laughs> mm-hmm. So some of our some of our we um, the states in over here are definitely reacting differently, but what I notice is a lot of people don't seem to be respecting this concept of quarantining after. So now that we are reopening. And people are starting to go back, you know, during the summer, uh, it's common to travel across state lines to go to a beach. Um, so, in theory, these, you're not supposed to be, you know, after you're doing that, you should be quarantining, isolated for two weeks, but I don't think like people are doing that. They're not really respecting that part of the guidelines. Which is interesting because the whole point was to 
prevent travel like that. You know, it's one thing to go down the street to the town next door. I mean, you know, a couple towns over, but you know, people are going out of the state and coming back and pretending like it didn't happen, which is nerve-wracking. Uh, yeah, Eva, have you been? What is it like over there? Sorry, have where? Are people traveling where you're at? Yeah, here in Spain, people tend to travel. Uh, even the guidelines say that uh, we shouldn't, but people travel. In fact, I have an apartment in in another place in the coast, but I'm I'm not going there because it's it's quite dangerous, and I prefer stay at home. And yeah, that's that's how every every everyone should um, act. But it's not. People tend to travel because they think that if we do, if we do like local tourism, we are not in, we are not put in risk. So, yeah, they they do it. But in fact, uh, what I think it's worse here in Spain, uh, apart from from traveling, is that people who has uh, who have been tested. Uh, they have to wait like two days to to know if they are positive or negative, and they they are not doing that, so they are not waiting, and most of the cases are positive, and that's wow. a disaster. Yeah. In fact, I know I I know people who has done that. Here in Chile, we have a similar situation because there are a lot of, there are a lot of clinics that uh, well, you get the PSR uh, exam and they give you the result two weeks after that. So there's really a lot of people that got the exam, keep working, and one two weeks later they find out they had coronavirus. The whole time, even the government uh, has tried have tried to make uh, some change, but the, really the private the private clin clinics uh, do whatever they want. Is trying to look at. Oh, sorry. I'm going to say, I'm trying to look at guidelines right now about travel that. Our government posted I'm trying to see what they're saying. Well, they if I are been, I'm wondering, we heard from some um, other participants in previous um, <clears throat> conversations where they had said that their government was trying to encourage people to actually get out a little bit and visit restaurants and um, shops and stuff like that to both you know, we want people to stay safe, but we also want to kind of foster some um, economic activity happening as well. Are there any programs or anything in your communities to help out, like service industry places, restaurants, things like that, um, uh, stores or anything like that? Any kind of um, programs like that for anyone? Yeah, in in my city, um, there is like a program to um, to promote um, buying or going to restaurants or shops, and um, it is like the government or yeah, the government uh, give you like a coupon. I don't know if you say it like that, and you can you can use it wherever you want in a in a shop in a mall in a restaurant and they like pay um half of the of the total of the price for you right. feeling comfortable using that because does it require you to go to a restaurant and eat in a restaurant or be out in the public um 
or are you still is that not enough incentive to get you out there you, you can use it um, as as you want it's like I, I like it it's a good way to draw Patricio, is there anything in Chile that's similar to that? Uh, not exactly. We are we aren't very coordinated in that in that way. Just I don't know. Influencers make some of that thing. The, the only people who promote or try to motivate another people to buy in local. I don't know what's the word. Small and medium enterprises, and um, the only ones that do something like that is influencers. No, not exactly a government participation in any of that. Jen, have you noticed anything like that around you? No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I think it's a fantastic idea. I wish we were doing something like that. Um, but no, and I think you really have to kind of uh, make consumers more comfortable getting out there. Um, so in, in some, to some degree, we have to be out there and see what precautions are being taken by restaurants and, and shops and things like that. And if we're comfortable with what they're doing, then we'll be comfortable to visit those places. Um, but let me ask you another question. Um, <clears throat> how do you think you guys will remember the coronavirus pandemic looking back at it from the future what are you going to remember most about this time <laughs> uh, i think i don't know i i think the the thing i will most remember is the fact that i i, I have played a lot of video games <laughs> mm. And gain some weight. Uh oh, Patricio, my my roommate um, is into weightlifting, and so he has purchased and borrowed lots of equipment and turned our garage into a full-on, full-service gym. And he also to do the same down there. He got buffed in yeah, uh, this current time. Yeah. He's making me look bad, actually. Um, <laughs> I would, I would say that uh, I will remember this never-ending pain in my back from hunching over and typing on my laptop. I have a knot that won't go away on my shoulder blade. I need to get a massage. Oof! A lot since I have the massage. In my case, I will remember it in, on the one hand happily because I passed it and I'm okay and everyone in my family is okay. So it's good to remember that and to value the things. But in the other hand, it has been, it has been hard and for everyone or for every family who has lost one or one person it has been extremely sad. So I understood, I understand that. And yeah, I have never, I have never forgotten that. I will never forget that. Yeah, I guess um, it's hard to see. I don't know one related to me or that I know closely has had issues with the virus. So it doesn't hit so close to home for me. Um, and so I'm missing that emotional piece, I think. Whereas it, I feel um, the inconvenience part stands out to me, but that's just because of the circumstance, like I just said. Um, I think I'm really busy right now. A lot of people have talked about being bored. I never, um, I never really stopped working, and my 
classes. You know, I was in class over the summer as well. So I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just distracted. I guess yeah, I've been busy the whole time. So I have my mind is elsewhere. I don't have enough time to sit here and ponder the pandemic. We lost Patricio. Yeah, it's it's good also to be like even it's no wonder because you don't have time to to think a lot and that's that's also good yeah in my case it has been quite the same yeah because it, i i spend the time doing exercise or reading or doing homework and it has been much better that way yeah but it's it's difficult anyway mm -hmm. So do you have a gym in the garage too? No, not really. But with YouTube videos and that stuff. Hmm. Patricio, what's it what's the temperature like outside? Can you go running? Um we are in winter here and mm -hmm. it's really cold outside. In fact I'm um, I have a lot of clothes on happening, but I think maybe there are uh, five or six degrees out there. It's really cold. And here is are the eight and a half of the morning. So mm. it's colder actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. I see I see both of you are are very light dresses. So uh, yeah. I, I imagine where you live, uh, we are you are in summer, or or, or no? Yeah, Patricio, it's been so humid here. The last like two weeks, we've been so hot and humid. Do you think the weather has contributed to um, how you? view or your country mates maybe view the pandemic. I think we in the northern hemisphere um, came into it in the winter. So it was the time that we were already kind of hunkered down inside anyway. Um, and then as things started to open up, it also became spring and summer and there were a lot of things we could do outside. And it was kind of a, a substitute in that way. Um, but I guess in in Patricio's case, in the Southern Hemisphere, you guys kind of went the opposite way where there were fewer things outside you could do and you became more and gradually more and more confined. Do you think that that contributed at all to, you know, how how you guys in your own countries are experiencing this? Yes, personally, here in Chile, it's normal that in winters our health system tends to collapse because it's very common to get a, a lot of uh, breeding disease. And now we were hit by the coronavirus at the beginning, since the beginning of the autumn. And yeah, uh, the coronavirus get uh, get along with all the other virus we used to have and that's why here in Chile we are we have so high numbers of infected people and dead people in my opinion I in in our case in Spain I absolutely think that the weather has changed the way we see the pandemic because when the lockdown started we were in winter and here in my in my hometown the winter is freezing cold and no one wants to go outside so that may be a reason why the people stayed at home i don't know but it, it could be and now that the um, the weather is is getting better and in fact we have like we have like 33 uh, degrees and it's a sunny day and all the days are like charming. I think people uh, start to start to, um, to go outside for that reason. 
in my opinion, I don't know. Yeah, we're in a similar situation, Eva. Although, I just was thinking, I, I mean, even if it, like, once once the cold weather hits, um, and people will stay indoors, but still, people are going to get sick of staying inside at their own house, and they're going to want to go out somewhere else. Um, so, yeah, I feel like initially, yeah, uh, when it hit, it was easy for people to stay inside. And then the weather kind of made people want to get outside. But, yeah, I feel like either way, it's gonna, people are going to want to leave their homes, hot or cold. I feel like they're going to get sick of being at their house just because they're not used to it. I don't know. It's not the norm for a lot of people. Everyone's going to have to start gaming a lot more. I bet, I bet video game sales have skyrocketed. But yeah, temperatures over here too, Eva. We've been close to 30 Celsius for a while now. So what do you think um, the pandemic has revealed about the state of the world or your country over the last few months? Have you seen strengths emerge? Um, have you seen weaknesses in your country? And And where do you think... Um, or how do you think those could be addressed? Oof. Sorry, yeah. I didn't understand the question. Do you think the pandemic has revealed any strengths or weaknesses in your country? Um, mm -hmm. And how, how might those uh, be addressed? Mm -hmm. uh, well, here in Chile, definitely... Uh, the pandemic has shown us the worst side of the government. Um, the authorities just see the people as an instrument, ju just numbers. We uh, have gone through a lot of experiments, as, a, as if said, um, because one day some in some commune they open the shopping mall for one day 100 new cases they close the mall at the next day and again they're trying to opening the same mall one or two weeks ago just just experimenting with the with the people so yeah i think that's one of the worst side of the pandemic here. Hmm. Yeah, I hate to I hate to focus on weaknesses. So I'll end on a positive. But yeah, definitely I mean we kind of already touched about how it brought out this division in views and conflict. But also in the US we were also you know, we simultaneously are having a, a big racial issue here. So, I mean, that's a whole other intertwining issue going on. Um, and I would say, so the system of government here is interesting to see. You know, we have a federal government, but we have a lot of states acting I independently uh, with different policies than the neighboring states. And so that gets a little funky when we, I was just talking about travel to and from states. Um, so, uh, I hate to call that a weakness, but it leads, I don't know, I think the different guidelines we've seen have caused a lot of confusion amongst people. Um, I think there's a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding um, because people are having a hard time processing all of the different recommendations, guidelines, and just news that they're seeing and it's changing frequently. Um, but on like the strength, I've seen, okay, so um, there was a decent response in terms of people looking to help each other. So um, I still, I continue to work through the pandemic and um, I work for a nonprofit that organizes farmer's markets here in New Haven. 
And so I even had customers come into the market, coming up to me, saying, like, do you need us to help deliver food to people that can't make it to the market? Um, so as an example, um, the type of attitudes I saw, people offering to donate masks, people I also did some volunteer work for a food recovery organization. And so just a lot of positive response of people trying to make sure neighbors um, and others in their community were fed, healthy, um, alive, you know, had help when they needed it. So definitely saw um, a positive social response there. Of course, there are some curmudgeonly people that don't fit into that category, but I saw a pretty overwhelming show of support for, from our community for other members of the community. We are on the same boat because here in Spain, uh, the strength um, part, the strength in part in, is that people is willing to help each other and people is, uh, people uh, has, uh, have been able to even create or to open a, a hospital and in two days and that's amazing yeah the, um, mm -hmm. like the willingness to help others but for example in spain the part that has uh, been uh, our weakness in my book is that we have been putting um, less money into uh, health care or yeah and that stuff instead of for example for example, other things. I think it's needed to put more money into education or into healthcare instead of other things. Oh, you know what else I wanted to, another positive. So we had a, a lot of people showing support and, and appreciation for essential workers, right when this all hit. Um, people were donating money and putting up signs thanking people who were still had to work during the pandemic. So there was definitely um, a shift in appreciation for these jobs and careers that people probably normally didn't really think twice about and didn't care about. Um, and then now during the pandemic, people are realizing like, wow, these are important jobs too, even though I thought they were silly, but that was nice to see. I mean, those thank you signs are still up all over the place, like thanking the first line workers and hospital staff. What do you think will be um, changed forever as a result of the pandemic? What things have, have been altered that actually kind of worked out well or better? Um, and what things uh, are probably gonna change and for the worse? I think uh, one of the most important things this whole pandemic thing will lead uh, will be uh, an important step to the uh, deep digitalization of the world. In things now, uh, the virtual job, I don't know if that's the way to say it, but the virtual jobs working through your computer from your home uh, will be every day more normal. Um, a few years ago, that was an unthinkable thing. No one could imagine that now in 2020, we we all can work from our home. I think that's one of the biggest things that will change forever. Obviously, the pres the presential work will always be more important. But we realize that there are there are a lot a lot of things that can be done sit from your home. Yeah, that I would say that uh, 
I don't know if it will be positive or negative, but it's definitely going to affect the educational system here in the U.S. Um, uh, I think it's too early to tell how that what's going to happen, but similar to a work environment, it's going to shift online and remote. Um, but also, I guess that I mean, I guess the the period of isolation really drew attention to mental health. People will appreciate that that factor a little bit more now. This need for social connection. How about two? Here's another positive. All this working from home is good for the environment. I see eye to eye with Patricio, and I think that um, the way of working um will will be changed forever and also um the concept that we have of the human being that we have always th thought that we are invincible or something like that and now we are more conscious that we are not invincible and we are here and we have to respect the nature and the planet and we have to be kind of worried about what is surrounding us As, Der as Derek said, I think uh, mental health will be a very important issue from uh, when the, all this thing is done and for a couple of years because I think that there are a lot of people that are fighting with their inner demons and lock it in your house, maybe having troubles with your family, making everything worse. I think uh, all, all governments have to make some change in the way we all see the mental health, because I, I, I think it's a very hard much to take out of the, we uh, all excuse me it's it's hard to take out the um, the image of fact uh, of crazy people we are not crazy people we all have mental issues we all fight with uh, our own problems it's not a bad thing to get worried about your mental health and it's important to try to make the change in the people way to see that what's well, unfortunate though i definitely can see a lot of small businesses suffering here in the u.s so hopefully that is not a long lasting effect here the uh, larger corporations don't really need any more power or money at the moment. So I hope the small businesses can rebound. Well, um, I think that the COVID-19 pandemic has sort of been a great equalizer for the world. You know, highly developed countries didn't and haven't fared better than those at the other end of the spectrum. Um, of course, we need support from our governments to get us through the pandemic, either from a health perspective or um, an economic perspective. But really, the way to move forward and get through this and, and overcome uh, this time in our lives is for our communities to get together. And they need to act. They need to get on board with and really buy into um, the public health measures that professionals and scientists and doctors are telling us to follow. Um, and I think a lot of that is very cultural. There can be cultures that are much uh, more interested in listening to uh, officials or the authority, you know, and there are others that maybe aren't quite so interested in that. So I think um, a lot of our 
our response to this has been this idea or this battle between community health and individual liberties. Um, and, and we still struggle with that. And I think we will continue to struggle with that you know, into the fall um, and well into what, uh, whenever we have a vaccine for this. Um, but in any event, it's, it's an ongoing struggle. So uh, we'll have plenty more to talk about in our future meetings. But I thank you all for joining us today. Um, I think this has been a really wonderful discussion. I've, it's been great hearing about um, not just the negative, but a lot of positive that has come from this. Um, and yeah, so we will, we'll see you guys next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.